finally, I want to show you how to do this in, in Weka Knowledge Flow. I have uploaded this knowledge flow up to uh, Blackboard so you can see it. But we can basically do those same things with, um, uh, with the knowledge flow, except it saves all the steps. And you can kind of do a little testing of, of different ways of doing it. Um, what I like about it is, whoops, how uh, across it, this is the developer version, but you've got all your different steps in data mining. So the data sources is when I go get data, data syncs is when I go write out data, and these are all the different data formats. The filters are, are all the things that we can do. Remember how we um, discretized a, a column or made bins? You would use one of these filters. Um, the classifiers are all the different models that we can run. And uh, we will talk about clustering in a different uh, week in associations as well. Evaluation is you know how we see, we see how well the model has done. And then we can use visualization to take a look at the data. So for example, over here, and if when you open this knowledge flow with your computer, you'll have to point to the right bank.arf, which is also uploaded in Blackboard. And one of the first things I can do is I can do an attribute summarizer. Um, of course, I have to run the knowledge flow. I've already run it. So if I go show summaries, now I see, remember that same um, distribution that I had shown before, except I've got it for all my attributes. Uh, again, with the red and blue showing those that participated in the marketing campaign and those did not, that, that did not. Um, I did the attribute selection. I now put it as a, a node. Uh, I can configure it, and that's where I pick what, uh, what filter I want to use. I'm using information gain here, but I can select whichever one I want. I can test a few and run this over and over. Um, if I'm curious to see what attributes it sets, I put another attribute summarizer, which it can be found in uh, under visualization over here in attribute summarizer. I just basically drag and drop it to the to the screen. And if I look here, I can see which ones it kept. It dropped a few, but not too many. In fact, it doesn't even look like it dropped any. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Your other video is ready. Uh, so I. Um, I can see what would happen, what attributes it kept. Um, if I want to split my data set, I have a node. Um, this is under evaluation. I, I go looking for the uh, train test. And I you know, basically just drop it. Boom. You know, I right click, I click, and then I click back on the screen. I'm going to get rid of this one because we already have one. And here I can tell it how much. Um, so here I'm doing a 66-44% uh, split. Um, so coming out of here, I'm going to have two types of data, the training set and the test, data, test set. The training set is what I'm going to feed forward to these different models. Then I have to create nodes again to test it. So I've got the training set coming out, and I've selected a neural network, which I can go find under classifiers, functions, and I pick the voted perceptron, just dropped it on the screen. Again here, just like I could in the other Weka interface, I can look at the you know what the things mean, how to set, how to mess with the with the different uh, pieces of this of this um, algorithm, and I did that with a logistic regression, which I found under um, I think they're under functions as well. Logistic, I did a naive Bayes, which I found under Bayes, and then I did a tree. And you can try any of these. I tried the four that we talked about in class. Um, once I run them, I can right click, and there's two things that I can do here. We, well, many things, but we looked at configure. That's how I decide how to set the different uh, settings. Um, I can create a text flow, which I then connect to a text viewer, which allows me to see the output of this actual model. And I can do that from all four different types of models that I tried. So if I go look at this, oh, I haven't run it. I better run it. It's now running and it looks like it's finished. If I go see the results, I now can one by one look at them. This is the neural network. It doesn't tell me much. Remember neural network, big black box, naive Bayes. Kind of gives me some probabilities. The tree it actually gives me the actual tree. Not as pretty as the Excel tool, but still we can get a general idea for, of what the, what the tree looks like. And here's some logistic regression, which gives me the beta coefficients. 
I now have to take each one of these and save them as models. So I come back over here and I say save the model. And I, I put them somewhere on my, where I can find it. Because I'm now going to create some connections over here. I'm going to redrop the same things, the neural network, the logistic regression, the naive Bayes, the tree. And then when I come over here, I have to say to it, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say here, load a model. So this is the actual neural network, so I'm going to grab the neural network. This is a logistic regression, so I'm going to grab the simple logistic regression model. This is the naive Bayes, so now load the naive Bayes. So now I want to test the, uh, the are my models, and I've already loaded the the models into my nodes. So I'll send test data to each one of these. So now I've got to um, my the, the whole picture. I go ahead and run that, and I can go look at my classification matrices, and it creates one for each model. I have it here twice because I ran it once before before recording. But it, if I look at the ones created at 602, here's my classification matrix for the neural network. Not so good for simple lo logistic regression for naive Bayes and for the tree. And remember we were going to look at precision and recall as, as really good measures besides the classification matrix, which we will cover in next week's lecture.